Hey guys, what's up? We're here with Brian Burrell. And correct me if I'm wrong, you're known as one of the one of the guys when it comes to throwing a surface iron. That's what they say. <laughs> now, I'm a, you probably don't remember because this was maybe five, six years ago when I started fishing. I would go on the Monte Carlo every once in a while, do, do a night trip. But I remember specifically one of the times I went on a day trip watching you throw a surface iron. And I just thought that's what people did. I was like, I can't. How am I ever going to throw a surface iron like that? And I thought that every guy in a boat threw a surface iron like that. Now I know, I would say how special, how long of a cast you have. Yes. Compared to most other guys. Like you're easy, you're easily out distancing people. So it's kind of cool to, in retrospect, see how how special that cast was. What tips can you give the guys Uh, with casting a surface iron? Basically, basically to be able to throw a surface iron real good, you got to have the right setup. Mm-hmm. Number one. Number two, it takes practice. Years of practice. You know, you're not going to get it in a year. It's, fishing is about patience, and the more you do it, the better you're going to get. It's just like anything else. It's like tying a knot. So when I was a kid, this, this started for me as a kid. I went on the, on the city of Redondo, and it was probably in the late 70s, and I was watching all the guys. I was 10 years old. I was watching guys catch fish on the jig, and and I, and I wanted to learn how to do that. That's I was like, oh, that's what I want to learn how to do. I want to be just like them. Anyways, uh, nowadays it, it takes the right setup. I didn't change the whole way I, I throw the surface iron. Now I use Spectra, long rod. You know, it, it depends on if you fish mono. It's a lot easier to cast mm. than Spectra. Uh, for me, I fished mono for a long time, and I ain't gonna say I lost interest in it, but, uh, when I start messing with the braid, I swore it off in the beginning mm-hmm. until I started messing with it, and then, uh, uh, I got good at it, and it's, it's changed the game for me. It's put a little fire mm-hmm. for, for, for me again, as far as fishing, because it's, it's different. Like a good setup would be like, I like a nine or ten foot rod, kind of light tipped, so you can load the rod up, and then you you get it up. The, the key to making a long cast is getting it up in the air. Mm-hmm. Don't try to cast against the wind because you're not going to do it. Go downwind. A lot of times uh, it looks like I'm casting really far, but the wind's carrying. The wind can carry your lure a lot farther than you can throw. If you can get it up in the wind or the breeze or not even so much. If it ain't breezy, you know, you can pick your spots, man. Watch the birds, man. Watch where the fish are. See where the bait's going. You know what I mean? There's a whole bunch of little intricacies as far as fishing a jig, knowing when to do it, how to do it, and and why you're doing it, what you're looking for. There's certain type of jigs that it catch bass. There's certain type of jigs that it catch straight yellow time. You know what I mean? And, uh... You got to know how to, you know, separate the two. Yeah. On a, on a basty type lure, you want to use some medium. I like using a medium weight or a Taddy C, something smaller. Uh, uh, and I, I wind it a little slower. A bass ain't going to go charging around like a tuna. Yeah. Or a yellowtail. Barracuda like a slow. They like a medium or slow. You know what I mean? Um, so, Barracuda, you going to go a little slower than you were for a calico? About the, about the same? Yeah. Now, I want to kind of move backwards just a step. You were talking about Spectra. I remember I was using mono because everyone was telling me, oh, you got to use mono. You don't have and to I use. heard an interview with you on Casting Crank where you talked about Spectra, and it kind of gave me the confidence to move to Spectra. Yeah. Which I feel like I'm getting also a further cast on top of that. But what size Spectra would you recommend? Nothing under 65. Mm-hmm. 60, I like 65 because it's thin and it goes far. You, yeah. you hold a lot of 65 on a Trinidad 20 or Trench 500 or, mm-hmm. uh, or I, I even use 50. When I'm fishing Barracuda, I, I use 50 pound Power Pro because it, it seems like to me a cast the best mm-hmm. on a small ass, 16 narrow and a nine foot rod and a small jig and that shit goes. Yeah, a mile because of the diameter of the spectrum. 
And then when I'm fishing spectral, I like to have my line wet. Mm-hmm. Up, I'll, I'll take a bottle. I'll go buy a bottle of water and pour it on there. Yeah, just so my line is coming off smooth. It's not all dry. And 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 wet spectral is a lot stronger than dry spectral. Yes, you won't cast off and snap off your lures. I, I personally been going to sixty and eighty pound top shots. Mm-hmm. Just straight floor car. Fluorocarbon is cheap. Or you can use mono. It's cheaper. But I like using fluorocarbon because it makes, to me, when I tie fluorocarbon on my ring, it keeps the ring stiff and it gives my chin. I like what you're saying. It gives a little room to move. Yeah, it makes it move by Yeah, because a jig kind of bumps into that stiffness and yeah it'll swivel on that ring yeah a whole lot better than if it's if the lines wobble like with mono yeah you know what I mean I, I use 80 then it's no contest it's interesting that you say that too because I like you said I noticed like when I when I use 65 pound braid I do get a further cast but when I go 85 or 100 I'm less afraid to break it but, but, it, but it, it doesn't go as far. Exactly. And even yeah. like when I'm fishing calico, I bump down to 40 braid. Yeah. Because I notice I get that much further on my cast. So I, I like I that, wouldn't use I like that you pointed it. Well, I was, when I'm fishing calico, I go 40 with plastics. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because it gets I that further that. distance. Yeah, yeah, I understand But, but I, I, too. I like what you're saying about like 65, 85 year, being that sweet last spot. Year, uh, I was fortunate enough to get in a, a sea valve bite, but it was biting a fluke. Man, the boat only had nine fish, but I had five of them because I was using 40 pound braid, a small little Trax 300, mm-hmm. and a fucking bass rod on a one, one and a half ounce lead head. Mm-hmm. Hit the bottom, pop, 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 pop. Ugh. They were smashing that shit, dude. Mm-hmm. I got my big, uh, I got my big, uh, Dorado last year on a sled head in the food. I believe it. So you were credited with kicking off the big bluefin bite in Southern California. You know what? Uh, I was there the first day, and I think I got the only one over 100 that day. And matter of fact, I did get the only one over 100 that day, and that was the first day that I was here. And on a big rod. And, and a surface iron. And was, a surface iron. I was fishing model, too. 40 pounds. 40 pounds. Got, um, got almost to the bottom of the swoop before he stopped, spun around, and came back. And then I uh, told myself I got to change. Now, from what I remember hearing, when you guys, because because the bluefin thing hadn't kicked off yet, when you guys saw the bluefin, you weren't sure what you were looking at. Like, because I've heard other guys from that trip say, like, we saw them, but we weren't expecting bluefin. No, we wasn't expecting. Like, like wait, what, see, what are we seeing here? Okay, Danny Erickson, who works on the New Del Mar, he got bit by one in the morning. He just... Randomly threw his jig out there and got straight smoke on the sink. Ooh, on 50 pound. Pow. I was like, damn, what you just hooked? I thought we thought it was a shark. It wasn't a shark. He's a bluefin. Yeah. We never saw the fish. But it ate his jig on the sink. And then we started seeing a couple, and then we started seeing a couple more as the day progressed. As it got in the afternoon and things was everywhere. At one point where I had my fish hook, that whole boat got Chewed up and chewed off. Everybody was there. Everybody. I don't even know if we want to ask about regular sport boat stuff because all that was so awesome. Where does he let this be a surface iron interview? 